I wanted kind of the car I think we dream of when we're kids, which is a car that you can drive on public roads, it's a car you can drive on the track, it's a car you can time trial with, you can club race with, you can go to the 7-Eleven with. Um, and I do all of that with this car. It's very good at doing a lot of different things, and, and that's something that as, as you progress into the car world and into the racing world, you generally have to accept that it's either going to be a good car to go up to Santa Barbara with, or it's going to be a good car to race in a POC race with. I sort of refuse to accept that. I want one car that'll do it all, and uh, I've done what I can to make this car both very streetable and very quick around a track. I started almost 13 years ago and I had bought a car to use on the weekends and it took a certain amount of time between when I ordered the car and when I got the car. Uh, and in that space of time I discovered uh, internet forums about Porsches and it went from being a car that I was going to like take on weekend picnics or something uh, and became something that I was going to be racing on the track the very first day I got it. It's kind of famously a difficult car to drive. The departure point for the 911 was putting the engine in the back, which famously is not a great idea in terms of vehicle dynamics. But Porsche has spent almost 50 years now fixing that problem with engineering. So it's, it is a car that will spin quite easily if you uh, let up on the throttle or give it too much throttle, depending on the circumstances. But if you can control that, the benefits of the rear engine uh, configuration are, are pretty significant. And on a track, if you can learn a dr to drive a 911, they say you can drive anything. I think that's true. Uh, once you get a handle on how to use all of that weight in the back, it becomes a very effective tool. It is a car that if you stop thinking about what you're doing, uh, it will remind you uh, sometimes in very abrupt ways. That said, it's also the same car I crashed twice and it's still going strong, so it'll take a, take a real beating. I'm dedicated to the idea that one car can do it all, so I don't want to trailer the car to the track. I don't want to have it be something that can only be driven uh, at the track. And so I fit in all of my tools, all of my aero pieces, helmets, everything I need for the track inside, uh, inside the 911 for the drive. It's not a collectible car, it's not a show car, it's really built to do one thing really well. And what I was able to do was kind of pick and choose from different eras of the 911 what I was going to put into this car. So it's a lightweight body from a 1972, it has an engine from a 1995 911, the transaxle is from a 1977, the brakes are from a 1986 turbo. It's kind of a Frankenstein that you can pick and choose. This car has parts from the year 1965 to the year 2000. It allows me to, to sort of cherry pick the best from the different eras of 911 and put together one 911 that is the one that I like. It has 272 crank horsepower, which isn't a whole lot by modern standards, um, but in the 2400 pound chassis, it does a, a, a pretty good job. All of the real work and all of the genius of my particular car is in the suspension. And I want to continue tweaking that suspension almost indefinitely. Horsepower is something that looks great in a magazine article, uh, but suspension is actually what gets you around the track fast. And this car does a fantastic job because of its suspension.
where engineering and design and function come together. And the 9-11 for me is a fantastic meeting point of those places. There is very little that's unnecessary on the car. And it's capable of doing uh, a great deal. And the garage that I've built, I tried to bring some of the same ideas to. It is got to be kind of a multi-purpose tool. I do a lot of carpentry, I do metal fabrication, and I do the work on the uh, car here. I had to take a 20 foot by 20 foot square box and make that into a tool that could do a number of very different things and sometimes mutually exclusive things well. It is a standard suburban two-car garage. It now has 10 separate work surfaces in it. Some of them fold down from the wall when the car is not parked there. Each has a specific purpose. Some are for welding, some are for woodworking, some are for working on the car. It has a floor lift that comes up out of the floor and uh, can, can serve either to lift up the car for maintenance or can function as, a, as another work surface. It has tool storage, parts storage, all of which done, I think, in a kind of uncluttered way, which makes it a pretty pleasant place to work. The garage, being a suburban two-car garage, gets a lot of attention. It was in Popular Mechanics last year. It was in Carcraft magazine last year. It's been featured on different websites. It's a, it's a well-known garage. The garage has been a great experience because I'm a fiction writer by trade. I, I had never set tile before I put the tiles in here. I'd never built a workbench until I started building workbenches in here. I'd certainly never gone out and bought an industrial lift table and cut concrete and poured concrete and put in uh, a lift. I'd never welded until I, until I started welding for the garage. The garage has become kind of a very big project in itself the benefit of which is I've learned 20 new skills I never had before. People caution you against ever saying a project like this is finished. Uh, I've done the majority of it. The last big step was digging a hole and putting a hydraulic lift table into the concrete floor to have a lift to, uh, to work on the car. That was the, what I felt the final and maybe craziest step I had taken uh, in putting this little two-car garage together. And it was a little bit scary to take such a big step, but it worked great. I've had this car now for 12, almost 13 years. It's the last car I want to ever own as a track car, as a weekend car, as a recreational car. To me, I want to keep developing that one object perpetually.